session and uh, we'll be beginning within a couple of minutes today we have with us ansi and anjali first year mcom students of the department of commerce they'll be taking you through the technical session over to ansi delegates a general reminder kindly ensure that you switch off your video and audio please post your queries in the chat box in case of any technical issues regarding joining the online conference kindly approach miss lakshmi her phone number and email id are given in our correspondence mail thank you Today we have with us one of the most eminent personalities, Dr. P. N. Hari Kumar, Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. He has 25 years of teaching experience. He has obtained dual PhD from the University of Kerala in both commerce and management. His enthusiasm in research has been widely accepted. 16 PhDs were awarded under him and four of them have been submitted which are awaiting its reports he has published 54 books in commerce and management and has 160 publications he has attended research methodology and data analysis workshops in 32 institutes which includes iams international business school and also itfi hyderabad Punjab Technical University Tata Institute of Social Science he has organized more than 80 research methodology workshops in the national level and has also organized international conferences in 14 countries he is the member of board of studies in four universities in the state of kerala on behalf of the department of commerce we welcome you sir for the technical session on behavior of time series data over to you sir thank you so thank you thank you my madam for sweet words about me and i am very proud to be a member of the organizing committee of this international conference for a relevant subject that means research in the area of finance we rarely seen an international conference or workshop especially in the area of research and finance sir uh, sir shall i interfere sir some unfortunately voice, sir voice uh, voice is breaking so it's it's better we can switch off the video uh, then the audio will be fine sir so we can check it am i audible now am i audible now yeah if it is better uh, switch off the video then it would be fine Okay. okay now it is audible yeah yes you yeah now it is audible okay so this uh, particular international conference and workshop is very very relevant for the research scholars doing research in the area of finance so before we start i would like to show one time series see the year started from 1970 to 71 up to oh share screen Sure. And for Gaudi, can you see my PPT? Ah, uh, yes, sir. We can see your PPT. Okay, okay. So I will okay. now I will show a time series data starting from nineteen seventy two seventy one two. 2016 the time series data with regard to n number of variables here see the value of dollar in 1970 71 7.555 
And 71, 72, it increased to 7.4. This is the average value of US dollar in 70, 71. 71, 72, it increased to 7.4. And 72, 73, 7.6. And finally, in 2015, 16, the value of US dollar 65.4685. So the data has been collected at different points of time. Here the time means the year. So this is the time series data. So it has its own features. From 70 to 71, I select the data up to 79, 80, 10-year data. When I use this 10-year data, definitely I may have a constant mean. In the next 10-year data, if I select, there is a mean variation. So we don't have a constant mean in the time series data. Similarly, in 1970-71, the value of US dollar 7.5. Decreased to 7.4 in 71, 72. 72, 73, it increased to 7.67. And in 89, 90, the value was increased to 16.64. So between two time points, there may be some variation. If the variation is high, which means there is heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity. That means the time series data have no constant variation. As the time changing, there may be the possibility of change of the value of one variable, which shows that there is no constant variation in the time series data. Similarly, the first year value may be dependent on the second, sorry, the second year value may be dependent on the first year value. Again, the third year value may be dependent on the second year value. That means the data is not independent. There may be some correlation between these two values corresponding to the type. And such a correlation is called a serial correlation, otherwise called autocorrelation. So when you consider time series data, definitely we have you no know, constant mean, constant variation. At the same time, there is serial correlation or autocorrelation that exists in the time series. See. When we consider a particular variable numerically expressed at different points of time, and here this is a dependent variable, US dollar, value of US dollar for the last 47 years, and that value is influenced by time. Therefore, US dollar is the dependent variable and the time is the independent variable. And see the movement of this particular dependent variable in association with the time, the independent variable. It is better to observe a graph. Therefore, by using regression curve estimation, here's US dollar is the dependent variable. And time is the independent variable. Value of US dollar from 1970 to 71 up to 2016. This is a dependent variable here, which is influenced by the change of time. Therefore, time is a dependent independent variable. So what will happen? See, the curve generated by the system. This is an observed value. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this is the observed value. That means from this point to this point, there is a constant variation. 
supposed to have a constant mean. But from this point to this point, there is an increase in tendency. Up to this point. And again, there is a decrease in tendency and there is increasing. This is the observed value plot. But when we consider time as an independent variable, what will happen? Can there be a linear trend or quadratic trend or exponential movement? We just observe the R square and how much influence the time, the independent variable has against the dependent variable value of US dollar. See the linear function, the R square is 0.9222, quadratic function 0.932, exponential 0.926. And we should consider only the highest R square, which is given by the quadratic function. Here, you just observe the curve of quadratic function. Starting from this area, and it shows an upward trend up to here for over the last 47 years. Why we have highest R square, 0.932? The highest, highest R score is for the model to predict or forecast the future values. At the same time, the F value and the T value is also significant. But if a particular time series having no constant mean, no constant variation, and the value between two time points may be related. That means we have serial correlation or autocorrelation. There is a possibility of the highest R square. And the F value and the T value may be found significant. And the T ratio is also significant. At the same time, the T ratio will not give a T distribution. Why? Because these three elements included in the time series data, that is constant mean. No, if you don't have a constant mean and we don't have a constant variation and sometimes there is autocorrelation existing in the time series. And these three elements will give highest R square. At the same time, it will not give T distribution. That is why some adjustment has to be made in the time series to minimize the effect of the not having a constant mean and the highest variation and also the serial correlation. So this is something about the general introduction of time series. Then coming to Today's presentation, I structured the presentation like this. We start from the meaning of time series. Example with some of the graphs. Types of time series sets, data sets. Types of time series analysis. And uh, what are the aims of time series analysis? And uh, I will show some time series graphs which shows the upward and downward movement and the components of time series and finally what is the concept of stationarity and i will not touch the complicated models like uh, arma arima sarima garch march war and uh, co-integration models so a conference or lecturing through online definitely demands this type of lecturing. So we start from the meaning of time series. So what is time series? The numerical data collected at regular time intervals. The sequence of numerical data obtained at regular time intervals. 
Here time is the independent variable and the values of a particular variable is the dependent variable. Or a set of data, that set of data depending on the time is called a time series. And in the time series, the data has been arranged chronologically. So time-based arrangement of data with regard to a particular variable. Or time series is used for forecasting. And in the forecasting, we use the historical values so that we can predict the future values. So the ultimate aim of the time series analysis is to predict the future value of a particular variable based on the previous value or historical values. And time series mainly occurs in different areas, economics, finance, environment or medicine. The time series data that can be collected from this area. And here are some of the examples of time series data. Number of babies born in each hour in our state, in our country, or in the world. So this is a particular type of time series. And daily closing price of a stock in a stock exchange for over the last 30 days, or for over the last six months, or for over the last one year. And GDP of the country measured each year. Definitely, it will give a time series. And here I want to explain types of data sets. Time series data I have already explained. Cross-sectional data and panel data. And it is very easy to analyze the cross-sectional data because we have a number of groups that can be created in the population and based on the data collected, we can analyze the impact of a variable according to different groups existing in the population. And what is the difference between time series, cross-section data and panel data? As I have already mentioned, time series is a group of observation on a single entity. Say for example, value of US dollar. For over the last 46 years, starting from 1971 up to 2016. So here we observe the value of a particular variable over a time. For example, daily closing price over one year for a single financial security. Or a single patient's heart rate measured every minute over a one hour. And what is the difference between time series and cross-section data? Cross-section is a group of observation of multiple entities at a single time. Say, for example, today's closing price of a particular share for 15 companies, sorry, 500 companies, or the heart rate of 100 patients at the beginning of the same procedure. So this is cross-section data. And there is a combination of time series and cross section, then such a data is called panel data. That means the data organized in both the dimension. That means time series and cross section, we combine these two data. Then we will have the panel data. So, for example, daily closing prices over one year for 500 companies. So, that is the difference between time series, cross section, and a panel data. And it is very easy to analyze the cross-section data by applying appropriate statistical method. But the analysis of time series data and panel data is something different. There are a lot of conditions and assumptions that has been validated before organizing the data for analysis. Again, there are two types of time series data set. Univariate time series and multivariate time series. And in the univariate time series that refers to the set of observation over a time of a single variable. Already I have shown the US dollar, value of US dollar for over the last 46 years. Here we have only one variable 
that can be changed according to the change of time. Time is the independent variable here and US dollar is the dependent variable here. But multivariate time series refers to set of observation over time of several variables. That means in addition to US dollar, we may have Japan currency. And what is the impact of the change of time on US dollar? and also Japan currency. So we have two same series here in association with the time. So when we establish some relationship between these two time series, based on the change of time, this is called a multivariate time series, multivariate time series. Then uh, what are the aims of time series analysis? To describe the pattern of time series data, one of the aims. And fit the models and make forecast. So based on the values in the time series, or historical values or present values, we predict or forecast the future value. And this is the main aim of time series analysis. And there is a question, what are the what are time series data different from other data? Data are not independent. And the statistical theory relies on the data being independent and identically distributed. The statistical theory says that data must be independent, but here the time series, the data is not independent. There may be some dependency between the values of a particular variable according to the different time points. A large samples are good, but long time series is not always the best. Series often change with the time, so bigger it is not always better. Then Time series analysis can be useful to see how a given variable changes over time. That is why I have already mentioned time is the independent variable and the quantitative figure based on a variable. The, the data collected at different points of time on a particular variable, that is a dependent variable. And time series analysis can also be used to examine how changes associated with the chosen data point compared to shift the other variable over the same time period. So that means there is a possibility of multivariated time series analysis. And what are users looking for in an economic time series? Important features of economic indicator series include direction. There may be some upward and downward movement on a particular point of time. So we want to examine or analyze the direction of a time series from one point to another. And there are certain turning points. And in addition, we want to see if the series is increasing or decreasing more slowly or faster than it was before. Sometimes we can find a slow movement or, or in faster movement with respect to a time series. And when should the time series analysis best be used? We may not assume the existence of a deterministic model given the behavior of the system considered. We can't apply a deterministic model in the time series. And in instances where deterministic factors are not readily available, the accuracy of the estimate can be compromised on the need. And we will consider only univariate time series. So here in my presentation, I will consider only univariate time series where we have one dependent variable and time is the independent variable. And what are the uses of forecasting? What are the areas where forecasting is made by using the time series? Sometimes we want to predict a value for the long run, long term prediction, long term forecasting, which include 
more than five years. Especially in the area of research and development, plant location, product planning, these are the areas where we have the need for long term forecasting. But medium term forecasting started from one season to two years. The areas where we need the medium term forecasting are aggregate planning, capacity planning, sales forecast. And short term, which include one day to less than one year. Maybe one season, especially for, for demand forecasting, staffing level, purchasing, inventory levels. So this is the time series. The exports of a particular product for over the last 10 years, starting from 1989 to 1998. The export, that is the X value, the dependent variable. In 1989, 44,320. 44, and in 1990, it is increased to 52.865. 1992, decreasing to 39.424. And in 1998, it shows an increase in rent. It was 74,626. So here the X value, the dependent variable, is the export. And the independent variable is the time. And in the x axis, there is time. And the y axis, there is the value of exports. So this is the plot we can generate from this data. See, this is a curve. And in 1988, 44,000 something. And it shows an increasing trend in 1990. Slight increase in 1992. And decrease in 1992, 1994, 1994, it has also an decreasing trend. Then increase to around 50,000 in 1994. And in 1998, it was increased to 75,000. So there is an upward and downward movement you can find in the time series data. So that is why we don't have a constant mean up to a particular time period or the variation is much higher here. No constant variation that can be found in a time series data. And see the plot below, it is a drawn from a data of monthly bookings for an airline. This is also an example of time series data. And it shows an increase in trend here. Sometimes there is upward and downward movement. Why there is upward and downward movement? And I will explain the impact of certain component on the time series later. And the importance of time series, I have already mentioned, understand the past behavior of a particular variable over different points of time, or what happened over the last years or months. Then based on the past values or historical values, we predict the future. So government wants to know the future of unemployment rate. The future values are to be predicted here. Percentage increase in cost of living. Then we ha may have a forecasting and predict the values. For companies to predict the demand for their product in future. So in all these areas, there is a need for forecasting based on the past values. Again, linear and nonlinear time series data. A times a linear time series is one where e, for each data point x, that data point can be viewed as a linear combination of past or future values or differences. That means the data, past data, and the time there is a linear combination of these two variables. 
but nonlinear time series are generated by nonlinear dynamic equations that have futures that cannot be molded to be a linear process there is no linearity in the time series there is no linear time series and how is time series data understood and used there are some areas the time series data has been used especially in the data mining signal processing and in econometrics or quantitative finance the time series analysis is very very important and again utility of time series to study the past behavior of data to forecast the future behavior based on the past behavior estimation of trade cycles maybe boom depression etc etc and comparison with the other time series is there any dependency between two time series or more than two time series here this is a very very important aspect what are the components of time series why there is an upward and downward movement that can be seen in a time series the upward and downward movement in a time series is basically the impact of these four components trend season of variation oscillation and random component and i will explain each component of time series one by one so there are four components of time series trend cyclical seasonal and random a study of time series aims at identifying the possible contributions of these effects and after eliminating these effects the remaining series called the residual series taken for analysis so i have already mentioned in a time series you can find upward and downward movement only because of the impact of these four components either trend cyclical seasonal or random sometimes there may be the combination of any two or sometimes there may be the combination of all the four due to such combination there may be the possibility of getting an upward and downward trend and if we minimize the impact of these components on a time series then we may have a residual series and that can be used for predicting the future values so the time series is said to be an effect of these four components the four components are trend cyclical seasonal and random so the researcher has to choose two models by considering the impact of these three these four components the additive model and the multiplying models in the case of additive model y t that means the impact of time on this dependent variable time series variable is the time associated with the trend plus the cyclical effect plus the oscillation effect plus the random effect or in the case of multiplying model yt is equal to tt into st into ot into rt these two are the models associated with the time series and the researcher can choose any one of the model and i can i will explain what is trend trend is a long time pattern of movements in the data overall or persistent long term upward or downward movements and the trend of a time series is not always linear so in the time series we may have upward movement and downward movement due to trends and the seasonal variation that means regular fluctuations that occur within a year examples consumption of heating oil which is very high in winter a particular season and very low in other seasons of the year and gasoline consumption which is very high in summer 
when most people go on vacation. So during a particular season, we can see an upward movement in the time series data. But whenever the season is over, we can see the downward movement. Cyclical component, especially with regard to business cycle, long time wave like patterns regularly occur but may vary in lengths. Often measured peak to peak and trough to trough. And there may be some random component associated with the time series. The, uh, the random component means the unpredictable random residual. Due to random variations of nature, accidents, unusual events. There are certain unexpected events which clearly indicates the downward and upward movements. And possible causes of random components are unseasonable and there is a change in the weather condition, occurrence of some disasters, strikes, sometimes sampling and non-sampling error. These are the reason why there is unpredictable events that creates a change in the time series. See, this is an example of circular trend. Upward, downward, upward and downward. And this is the upward and downward movement due to the impact of seasonal variation. The second component of time series. See, what is the impact of cyclical variation on the time series? Peak moment, trough moment, between them contraction and tough to peak expansion. So there may be a wave-like movement which creates the upward and downward trend in the time series data. So random variation, the variation due to unexpected events. And how to eliminate this effect of the four components in the time series data so that we can have a constant mean, constant variation and minimize the autocorrelation. And one method is classical decomposition. Decompose the series into different components or various components. So this is the original series. And we can convert this series into this form by eliminating the impact of the components of time series. Maybe trend, seasonal variation or oscillation or random. This is another chart showing the variation. This is regular variation. And seasonally adjusted series. We eliminate the component of seasonal factor. Then we minimize the impact of trend here. Minimize the impact of regular variation here. So in order to minimize the impact of the four components of time series, there are basically two methods moving average or exponential smoothing. And I will explain the moving average here. From the time series data, we can calculate the three-year moving average or five-year moving average. And what will happen when we calculate the three-year or five-year moving average corresponding to the time series data? See, the moving average, the equation is y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3. Then y2 plus y3 plus y4 divided by 3. So this is the time period starting from 81 to 87. Production of a particular commodity from 1981 to 1987. Time is independent variable and production of a particular commodity is a dependent variable. 
by applying the moving average what will happen see the first three figure three year move three year moving average 412 438 and 446 we take all the values for the first three years and the average is 432 again we select 438, 446, 454, the average is 446. Then 446, 454 and 470, the average is 500, 457. So this is a way in which we can calculate the moving average based on the first three years, second three years and third three years. See, this is the original plot, the plot based on the original value, starting from 412, 438, 446, 454, 470, 483, and 490. So the curve is like this. Upward and downward movement you can see in the curve. But whenever we calculate the moving average based on the three year, here the moving average for the first three year, 432. Then the moving average for 1982 to 1804, 446 and so on. When we plot this moving average, definitely we will get a flat curve, flat series here. In which we have the constant mean, sometimes we have the constant variation. Normally we can't find a constant mean and constant variation in the time series data. So in order to get the constant variation and constant mean, we have applied a moving average. Calculate the moving average, then plot this average in the graph. Then we have a flatter series. Then another method is least square method fitting a straight line trend y is equal to f plus bx and this is a regression equation but when we go for the application of regression definitely we must check whether time series has a constant mean constant variation or is there any serial correlation or autocorrelation between the values at different points of time. So now comes to the stationarity. This is a very, very important for time series analysis. A stationary time series is a series where there are no changes in the underlying system. That means a series is said to be stationary. Definitely that particular series has a constant mean, which means no trend. Constant variation. We must have a constant variance. That means there is no heteroscedasticity. If the variation is very high, we found that there is heteroscedasticity element. And constant autocorrelation structure. And finally, no periodic component. That means no seasonality. So at the time of the application of some of the statistical method against the time series data, you should ensure whether the data is stationary. Time series is stationary, which means the stationary time, sorry, the time series data has no constant means, constant variance, and the constant autocorrelation, and there is no seasonality component in the time series. Then only we can say that the time series is stationary. That means a stationary model is when there is consistency in data over a period. That means the statistical properties are constant in the time series. Then only we can say that the time series is stationary.
And why is stationary is important? Stationarity is important. Most forecasting methods assume that distribution has stationarity. For example, autocovariance, autocorrelation rely on the assumption of stationarity. And absence of stationarity can cause unexpected or bizarre behaviors like T ratio not following T distribution. I have already mentioned. Then we will get an R square when we use non stationary data for modeling. And the values assigned to variables are not correlated at all. Therefore, stationary process has the property that the mean, variation, autocorrelation, structure do not change over time. We will have a constant mean, variation and autocorrelation. And stationarity can be defined in precise mathematical terms, but for our purpose we mean a flat looking series. That means remove the impact of the four components in the time series. Without trend, constant variance over time, constant data correlation, structure over time, and no periodical fluctuation, that is called seasonality. And if the series is consistently increasing over time, the sample mean and variance will grow with the size of sample, and they will always underestimate the mean and variance for future periods. That means if we use non stationary data for prediction, definitely the non stationary data will give spurious regression, meaningless regression for prediction and estimation. So, again, defining a stationary time series, it is the one where the mean, the variance are both constant over time. In other words, it is the one whose properties do not depend on the time at which the series is observed. Therefore, the time series is a flat series. We need a flat series. Without run, with the constant variance over time, a constant mean, a constant autocorrelation, and no seasonality. That is why the time series should be a flat series. After eliminating the impact of so many components, we may have a residual series that is used for the model building and prediction. This makes a stationarity series easy to predict. See, the graph shows a constant mean here. Here, there is an upward and downward movement. At the same time, the mean value is constant. And constant variation here. Three charts. You just look at the three charts. Here the mean is stationary, almost the equal upward and downward movement. And variation is also similar. But here, non-stationary mean, meaning it's not constant. And stationary variance, variation is almost the same, but the mean value must be, must have certain variation here, high level of variation here. And here stationary mean and non-stationary variance. Then another important element, autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is a key concept in time series analysis. Autocorrelation is the correlation between a measurement at two different times. Second year value may be dependent on first value or correlated to first value. Or third year value may be correlated to second year value. So this is the presence of autocorrelation. And the time interval between values is called lag. So, for example, stock prices may be correlated from one day to the next with a lag value of one. Autocorrelation often results in a pattern where the time series without autocorrelation will exhibit randomness. Here, no autocorrelation. But he, this graph shows the data has autocorrelated. Constant autocorrelation structure, the stationary time series has constant autocorrelation structure throughout the entire series. If the autocorrelation remains constant throughout the series, a simple transfer step can be used to remove the autocorrelation. So if there is high level of autocorrelation found in the time series data, how to reduce that autocorrelation? And there are different methods for 
dealing the water correlation found in a particular time series. And how to identify non specific time series data? There are several methods to identify non stationary time series data. Run sequence plot. Summary statistics you can calculate. Based on the histogram plot, we can identify whether the data is stationary or non stationary. Or applying ADF test augmented Dickey Fuller test to find whether there is any stationarity or non stationarity element in the time series. And run sequence plot, a run sequence plot is simply a plot of your time series data. And I have already presented some of the plots. See, the data, the time series data may be split up into three parts. Chunk one, that means part one, part two and part three. The mean value for the first part, 19.8. Mean value for the second plus 18.6. And mean value for the third part of the time series, 18.5. So here we found no mean variation statistically. Because 19.8, 18.6 and 18.5. But considering the variance, 12.3, 13.1, and 12.8. And variation is also not found significant. So this is a stationary series of stationary time series. But considering this, mean value 19.8, 30.6, 49.5. So the mean value is not constant over time period. That is why the series is not stationary and variance 12.3 13.1 and 12.8 variance is constant here but mean value is not constant that is why the time series is said to be a non-stationary series and here also the example of non-stationary series mean value 19.8 18.6 and 18.5 we have almost more or less a constant mean here. But variance 11.8 for the first part of the time series, second part of the time series 40.6 and third part 41.3. That means there is an increasing trend. Maybe due to the seasonality component. So here the, we have different variations, variances here. So that is why the data is said to be non-stationary. And after considering the histogram plot, we can identify whether the series is stationary or non-stationary. Here this is the stationary series. This is a histogram. And based on the shape, we can find that this particular time series is has stationary. Stationality. And uh, we have no histogram here, therefore, the data has no stationarity. And finally, the stationarity can be tested by using augmented Dickey Fuller test, ADF test. And that can be applied by using different softwares like EVUs and uh, Gretel. The augmented Dickey Fuller test is a hypothesis test that tests specifically, specifically for stationarity. That means we start a null hypothesis. We generally say that the series is non stationary. The time series is non stationary if the p value is less than 0.05. It is a less appropriate test to use with a small data sets or when heterocidacity is present. So by applying augmented Dickey-Fuller test, 
we can find whether a particular time series has stationarity or non stationarity and how to transform non stationary time series data remove trend remove the way high level of variance that means heteroscedasticity remove auto correlation with the differencing first value and the second value second value will be detected from the first value that means differencing remove seasonality that means re remove the effect of periodic components and often you will have to do several of these on the one data set thank you and if you have any queries please ask Hello. Yes, so uh, I have four questions. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry. And I have four questions how to check autocorrelation. So, autocorrelation can be checked by using Durbin Watson test. When we apply regression against time series data, this particular value will come, and which shows there is whether there is any autocorrelation existing in the time series or not. And please cite examples of linear variables and non-linear variables. If a dependent variable is changing in association with the independent variable, there is a constant movement between these two. We can say that there is a linear relationship. But if we have no such a relationship in respect of a movement of two variables, dependent and independent variable, we may say that there is no linear relationship between these two variables. To what extent the predicted value is closer to the actual? I don't get that particular question. And what is the best method to check stationarity? Definitely the graph or histogram will tell you the presence of stationarity or non-stationarity in a better way than applying any other test like a ADF test. Any other question? Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, when we check stationarity with the help of augmented Dickey Fuller test or PP test, uh, how to select the lag value? So lag value you, you can uh, calculate only for uh, adjusting the autocorrelation. Suppose in the first data set, 7.5578 is the value of US dollar in 1970 71. 7.4731 in 1972. So we can Calculate the difference between these two values. This is the lag one, differencing. Then we will have another residual series based on differencing. And it will have no autocorrelation. It may have constant mean or constant variation. That is why I have already mentioned residual series or flat series will be used for modeling and prediction. Any other question? Bhagavati? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I think there is no more further questions. Uh, you may proceed, sir. So thank you. Thank you very much for giving an opportunity to present the very, very important and very difficult topic, time series analysis. And uh, I have not touched the complicated modeling of Arma, Arima, then Sarima, then Garch, Arch, War, and also co-integration. And uh, basically, this type of application can be demonstrated 
through offline that is very good for the research scholars. It is impossible to demonstrate such application through a clear cut data set through online. So thank you. Thank you very much. May, may I add a comment? Sir. Uh, I should congratulate uh, Professor Hari Umar. It was a very good presentation. Sir, basically, I, I created an interest of data analysis only because of you. Because <laughs> when I did my MPhil program, you have applied a multiple regression and <laughs> interpret the output to me. I don't know which software he had used, uh, you have used uh, at that time. That was in the year 1992. That created an interest in me to learn the intricacies of the application statistical technique only with the help of Professor K. Kalyanaram, the genius in the field of applied statistics. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have, you have become an expert now. You have become a very good expert in time series and other analysis. I know, I know that. No, but because you are, uh, you, it was very comprehensive covering all the aspects of time series, the various different aspects of time series. And also the examples were good. You know, the, you have given good examples for illustrating uh, the different aspects of the uh, time series, you know. This, uh, so it was a very good, excellent presentation. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, sir. It's a very good compliment for me because you are one of my favorite teacher. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Bhagavati, you start. Sir, it was a really, really yes, sir. excellent yes, sir. session. Hi, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Biju. Yeah. So you have uh, explained uh, fundamentally basic aspects of time series. I think this is a rare, a rare lecture which was given to the participants because uh, everywhere uh, the analytics uh, is going on, but the participants. Uh, I did not get an opportunity to get a fundamental uh, aspect of time series. So, uh, so that way it was uh, excellent, sir. Thanks thank a lot. And thank, uh, you, thank you very much. The thanks will be given by Bhagavati. Official, official conclusion will be given by Bhagavati. Um, it was indeed one of the most fruitful sessions we've got today sir uh, taking difficult classes in a simple way is always a tough job and for students like us to keep listening to your classes so keenly is also very tough so today's session was uh, not only very easy to understand but i think it was very useful for all of us so on behalf of the department of commerce and all the uh, uh, committee workshop and all the participants who are here today we thank you from the bottom of our hearts sir because it was such a wonderful class and uh, thank you once again sir i am assured that the participants would say the same thing uh, so thank you once again sir thank you so much uh, we are expecting more classes like this from you uh, thank you sir thank you thank you very much for the